Matthew chapter 12, verses 22 through 32. Then a demon-oppressed man who was blind and mute was brought to him, and he healed him, so that the man spoke and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, Can this be the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, It is only by Beelzebul, the prince of demons, that this man cast out demons. Knowing their thoughts, he said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste, and no city or house divided against itself will stand. And if Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? And if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore, they will be your judges. But if it is by the Spirit of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come among you. Or how can someone enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man. Then indeed he may plunder his house. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. Therefore I tell you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven people, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. And whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or in the age to come. Have you ever heard of the phrase, throwing rocks and hiding your hands? This common idiom expresses the underhand act of a person who wishes to cause harm but remain undetected. The devious perpetrators wish to inflict maximum amount of harm with the least amount of responsibility without detection covertly and from the shadows. In this text, Jesus healed a deaf, dumb, and blind man with irrefutable results. In response, the Pharisees slung rocks of criticism at Christ from the shadows. They stood outside the residence where Jesus rested and sowed lies in the crowd about Jesus. They never questioned whether or not Jesus actually performed a miracle, but conjectured that he performed the miracles by the power of Satan. In fact, they use an old term called Beelzebul, which in their language meant Lord of the Flies or Lord of Dung. Oppressed. This is how Matthew described the demon-possessed man in verse 22, an apt word when describing the condition of a human under the devastating damages of a demented demon. His physical prowess screams silently from beneath the weight of demonic oppression. Silent, shadowy eyes, silent mouth soundless ears, the fragile, fragmented frame of a man quivering quietly until heaven hears. Jesus mercifully healed this dumb, deaf, and blind man instantaneous with irrefutable results. The crowd responded in amazement, overshadowed by ambivalence. They harbored hopeful wonder about Jesus' messianic claims. Can this be the son of David? They questioned. Yet the, they remained doubtful. The Pharisees used the crowd's uncertainty to feed into their ambivalence. The Pharisees poisoned the puzzled people against the power they witnessed from Jesus. In the vernacular, the Pharisees were throwing shade. This text discloses the malicious acts of the Pharisees who wished to inflict pain on Jesus without confrontation. 
the deluded Pharisees wished to confuse the crowd about Jesus's claim. Yet, the Pharisees saw the issue clearly. They knew Jesus performed the miracles by supernatural powers, but they were unwilling to concede that those powers came from God. So, from the secrecy and safety of the shadows, they sowed insults. From outside the house, in the shadows, they sowed doubt. Nevertheless, their premise proved flawed. The problem wasn't in their trajectory nor in their aim. Their mistake? Throwing pebbles at Kilimanjaro. They threw rocks at the rock. Though outside the earshot of Jesus, they were not outside the earshot and omniscience of Christ. Jesus knew their thoughts, verse 25. And as expected, Jesus' logic proved rock solid. Jesus refuted their crazy logic and criticism with an impenetrable boulder of truth. We expect no less from the mind of God. Jesus demonstrated the absurdity of their accusations first by pointing out the bogus notion that civil war stabilizes any nation, verse 25. Secondly, he pointed out their biased evaluation concerning how their disciples cast out demons, verse 27. And thirdly, he noted their abject insolence displayed before the undisputable champ in their presence. Jesus frowned on the septic seeds scattered by his skeptics, verse 30. Their rejection of God's power in their presence proved unforgivable, verse 32. They blasphemed. They mouthed degrading derogatory things about God that were not true. The act of blasphemy may be forgiven, Paul labeled himself as a blasphemer in 1 Timothy 1.13, but said that he received forgiveness because he spoke against God ignorantly. Even Christians blaspheme when they say untrue things about the person and character of God. But the difference between Paul's blasphemy and the untrue statements about God and the person of God that some Christians sometimes make is the intention and the intellect of the blasphemy. The Jews in this context not only spoke untruths about God, but they did so knowingly. The works Jesus performed were undeniable. The Jews during Jesus' day possessed the best information about the person of God, yet chose not only to deny the origin of the miracles, but speak evil against the presence of God in their midst. Jesus perfectly explained the person of God the Father in the flesh, according to John 1.18. God provided them with the best evidence, yet they denied the proof. What more could God have done, like Isaiah says? If God reveals himself and you choose not to believe in him, there exists no other way to salvation. This is the essence of the tragedy of what happens when you blaspheme God's power. No other power in the universe exists by which a man can be made right with God. Jesus' enemies were so deluded that they had rather take attention away from Jesus, the delivered man, and bring attention to Satan rather than point to the brilliance of the compassion on display. Their delusion determined that the devil deserved more attention than the delivered, demonized man and the divine champ in their presence. They threw rocks, but... Their hands were visible to Jesus. Omniscience knows all. Jesus rolled out his rock-solid logic. In fact, as further 
irrefutable proof he would later roll out from under another rock. But that's a story for another day. Live well, hope well.